Hello, today's contract tip has to do with the amendment that you use during the due diligence time frame. So regardless of which contract you are binding under, either the GAR or the RE forms, when a buyer and a seller have agreed in that contract for the buyer to have a due diligence time frame or in the RE forms, this same time period is referred to as the buyer's right to terminate period. Um, it, it refers to the same thing. It is an option contract for the buyer for a specified number of days, whatever the buyer and the seller have agreed upon. So during that time frame, uh, as you know, that is the time frame within which for the buyer to decide, are they going to proceed with the contract or are they not? They also have the opportunity to make themselves 100% satisfied with their purchase before choosing to proceed or not. So within that time frame, they have the opportunity to have all kinds of inspections done. They can have an independent home inspection, they can have a termite inspection, they can have a zoning inspection, check out the schools, do whatever it is within that time frame to be 100% satisfied that they are choosing to go through with that purchase. So within that time frame, if there are any issues that the buyer wants the seller to address with the house, the buyer uh, proposes an amendment to the seller to address concerns. And all of this has to be decided on within this time frame prior to 11.59 p.m. at night on the last number, on the last day based on the number of days that the buyer and the seller have agreed to. After that time frame, if the buyer does not terminate, then the buyer has chosen to proceed with the contract and they are buying the house as is if nothing gets negotiated between the buyer and the seller. Again, if there are items that the buyer wants the seller to address with the property, then there is a specific amendment to use. In the GAR form, it is GAR F107, the amendment to address concerns with the property. In the RE forms, it is RE262, Amendment During Buyer's Right to Terminate Period. Now these are the specific amendments to use during this time frame, as I mentioned, for the buyer to propose to the seller, okay, seller, I want you to fix or to address A, B, C, D. And the seller can negotiate, the buyer and the seller can negotiate back and forth. They have till 11.59 p.m. at night to decide to negotiate and agree on whatever those items are and as i mentioned buyer either has to terminate or they agree to whatever gets negotiated or the they proceed on and the buyer purchases the home as is if nothing has been negotiated now what i want to bring to your attention is on these two amendments there is a very very important paragraph pre-printed at the bottom that you absolutely need to pay attention to and it is it addresses a completely different issue with the contract. So in the GAR form, at the very bottom of the, on both of them, there's something, there's verbiage that is pre-printed and there is a checkbox that you as the agent fill out that says shall or shall not. But be very careful and make sure you read which contract you're on. So on the GAR form, the box at the bottom says, in consideration of the seller agreeing to address certain concerns of the buyer with the property, all parties agree that if this amendment is signed by buyer and seller and delivered to both parties, buyer's due diligence period and the right to terminate this agreement set forth therein shall or shall not terminate. The RE forms at the bottom, it also has a shall or shall not, but let's read that one. That one specifically says this amendment shall or shall not act as a unilateral notice of termination of the above reference contract if not accepted by the seller and delivered back to the buyer prior to the end of the buyer's right to terminate or due diligence period as defined in the contract. Completely different issues that this paragraph is addressing. In the GAR form, it basically says if buyer and seller agree to the terms in this amendment, then if the shall box is checked, that ends the buyer's due diligence period. So let's say a buyer has uh, an, an independent home inspection done and that's all they're going to do. They propose the amendment, the, uh, the seller agrees to whatever was on the amendment on day four uh, after binding agreement date, then regardless of, and that little box is checked, then regardless of what was in the purchase and sale agreement, that ends the buyer's due diligence period right there. 
in the RE forms, if it says shall and the seller does not agree, then this acts as the buyer's termination of the contract to protect their earnest money. So what I need for you guys to be very, very careful of is when you are, regardless of what form you are on, if you and the seller's agent, if the buyer's agent and the seller's agent are negotiating through these forms back and forth, through these items back and forth on behalf of the buyer and the seller and using different forms, make sure to address that issue if that is important to the buyer and the seller. So be very diligent regarding which party you are representing, buyer and the seller. And if this box is checked and you guys are going back and forth on the different forms, make sure to address that issue regarding uh, ending the due diligence period early or terminating the contract if you don't hear back from the other party. One way or the other, make sure those items are addressed on behalf of the buyer and the seller. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Dana Sparks, broker with Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors, satisfying your needs with service, innovation, and education.